in this culture, the rivers, we have not seen them as just water bodies. We have seen them as life-giving gods or goddesses. Because what we call as water, what we call as air, what we call as food, what we call as the earth that we walk upon, these are not commodities, these are life-making material. In this culture we never worshipped unknown gods somewhere. There's never been a god up there in India. All the gods that we worship are people who walked this geography at some time. Whether you take Shiva or Rama or Krishna or whatever, they all walked this land, went through trials and tribulations that every human being goes through and much more. What you call as Mahabharat is one great turmoil from beginning to end, ending in a terrible, disastrous war. But still, one man remained untouched, actively involved, but untouched. So it is for that that we worship them, not because of their success, not because of some miraculous powers, they all were normal births for their mothers. <laughs> Nobody landed from the sky. And they walked this land like all of us, went through everything that all of us go through and much more. But still we worship them because they remain untouched. In many ways, a river represents that, that it doesn't matter what kind of people touch it, because of its nature of flowing, it remains pure and always there. So we never saw rivers as water bodies, we never saw rivers as just geographical happenings. We always saw them as life-making fundamentals for our life, because over seventy-two percent of our body itself is water. Over seventy percent of the planet itself is water. So having said this, <clears throat> the fundamental science about transcending or transforming human life is called Bhuta Shuddhi, that is cleansing of the five elements. This is a miraculous process in the sense, this whole universe, the variety of lives, and forms everywhere. All this has been created just with five elements, not with five million, just five. And how magically these five have come together in billions of ways, and one is absolutely unique compared to the other. And all of them have been made only with five elements. So, if one wants to transcend their own physical nature, the most fundamental and the most effective way of doing this is going through the process of Bhuta Shuddhi. The whole yogic science is an evolution out of Bhuta Shuddhi process, that is doing things with your elements. If you take charge of your elements, everything is in your realm, everything is in your control. One who masters five elements is considered master of the universe. Water is predominant because seventy-two percent is water. If we keep the waters in this body pure and good, health, well-being is simply taken care of. Yes.